Hi. So today I'm going to talk about a question someone has asked me that uh, should I pursue PhD if I want to become a quant in the future? By the way, this this guy is in, still in school. You know, he's thinking about PhD. You know, uh, quite interesting actually. Maybe very smart guy. Because when I was in school, I had no clue about uh, about the career path I was going to take. Although I was quite interested in mathematics, nothing else. So I knew that I will be doing something related to mathematics. Um, but I wasn't sure as to what, and I, I don't think I, I heard about uh, quantitative finance back then. Um, so, so, so this quite quite good. That thanks to internet, maybe the YouTube videos, maybe this guy has uh, come to know this is a career track that he would like to take, and he's already in, uh, thinking about it when he's, he's still in school. Um, well. Um, well, the short answer to this question is that uh, it depends. Now, I don't want to answer something like it depends. That's uh, a very uh, diplomatic way of answering a question. Uh, but I also don't know your situation. I don't know, know actually what is is it. I mean, what exactly do you want to do? Right? Do you want to have a backup plan, or do are you hundred percent sure that you want to do quantitative finance? Because uh, most people who come to quantitative finance, they uh, they don't do a degree to become a quant guy. You know, they they actually just learn something. They do computer science, physics, maths. You know, when you do these uh, subjects, maybe computer science is different, but for other subjects, such as mathematics and physics and and economics, you don't study these subjects to become a mathematician or a physicist or economist. Well, some do, but most people do these subjects because uh, they have no other options. Um, but you know, there's no profession called uh, being a mathematician. You know, except for academic professionals who are mathematicians, you can't be a mathematician and make a living out of it. So you really need to then find something where mathematics is used, and that's when you can think about uh, a career in quantitative finance. So, but when you are starting out, right? You should do. Should we keep that in mind that okay, I want to become a quant. That's why I'm doing mathematics. Um, it's not a bad idea either, right? People suggest that oh, you shouldn't have that kind of mentality, uh, but that's a good thing actually. You know, what I've realized is that you know this is also one thing uh, I've experienced with engineers. You know, especially in India, who when they do uh, engineering, right? They one thing they have in mind that eventually they will work in some non-engineering field. They will be writing code or doing finance or doing marketing. I don't know, and they prepare themselves accordingly. Uh, they become very bad engineers. But uh, they eventually become good in something else that is uh, that can be monetized easily. Not bad, right? Which is not a bad thing actually. So similarly, you can also do that, right? You can uh, you can think about uh, whether what you are doing uh, will be will be sort of useful or not. Now come, let's come back to this question that uh, you know the original question whether you should go for PhD or not. If you are too sure about becoming a quant, I think don't go for a PhD. Uh, at least don't think about going for a PhD when, while you are doing bachelor's degree or master's degree. If you can, uh, well, the thumb rule is that if you uh, get uh, placed, right, you get uh, a good job offer uh, right after your undergraduation or post graduation, uh, go for that, right. Your real world experience will matter way more than your academic experience. Um, but even if you want to do PhD in finance or quant finance, right, that experience will be less valuable compared to, let's say, you have worked a couple of years with Morgan Stanley or a couple of years with Citadel, right? That experience will be a lot more valuable, right? You can make more money. And not to mention the opportunity cost of making money early in your life and, you know, investing that. And that really will uh, compound at a rate that uh, you'll never be able to catch up with that if you spend just way too many years in the in the academic world but most people I, I know who have done PhD they don't think uh, a career outside of academia when they are doing PhD you will not be able to finish your PhD then it takes four five six years to finish a PhD right if you only aim to you know make money and, and get a professional uh, job that uh, doesn't require a PhD actually anybody can enter well with with just a master's degree uh, then you will never be focused enough to complete your PhD, right? So the general rule that is applicable to most PhDs is that if you are doing PhD, you are doing for the love of research, right? Everything else is a byproduct of that. If you do not have that kind of a 
spirit, then you must avoid doing a PhD. Uh, doesn't matter in which area, right? But if you are already doing PhD, right? Uh, someone who is doing PhD, you should not quit. Complete your PhD, and you will have tons of opportunities. A lot of the skills that you will learn as part of your PhD will be useful. For example, your writing skills will be very useful. Many students do a lot of complicated, uh, very sophisticated mathematics uh, as part of the PhD program. That will be really uh, useful. Your uh, skills in reading papers, that will be very useful. Uh, PhD is becoming very collaborative nowadays, so that will also be very useful. Because when you work in the industry, uh, things will be very collaborative, so uh, very useful. Uh, but also, you know, uh, come out of that PhD mindset or academic mindset when you start working in the industry because in the industry people only care about how much value you are bringing to the table right if you're working as a quant trader how much money you're making for the trading desk if you are uh, working in the lending side of business working as a quant are you able to build models on time that satisfy regulatory requirements all those things will matter more than your academic pedigree right um, that will perhaps help you to get a get your first job not after that so once you get your first job, just forget about your <laughs> about uh, the fact that you have doctorate uh, next to your name, right? That will matter less. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Uh, having said that, let me tell you that many people I worked with, uh, I am not a PhD myself, by the way. I wanted to go for a PhD, but uh, eventually decided not to go for it. Um, many people I have worked. Uh, in the industry, uh, in the quantitative finance, they have PhDs, especially PhD in mathematics and physics. Uh, in Europe, actually, many physicists will eventually work in the field of finance. Okay, but I've asked this question: that Did you know that you will work in the field of finance later on in your life? They were not sure about it. Right? They were simply not sure about it. Uh, they had no idea about that this field exists. In fact, I know a guy who actually started his career in quant finance when he was already in his late 30s, 37, 38. He had no clue about um, about this field. Uh, and yeah, he came to know about it from a friend and then he tried and he got into it and he was very happy actually uh, because he was struggling uh, with less money working as a postdoc. Uh, academic jobs can be very low paying uh, but then he told me that if he had known about this then he could have you know uh, come to this field right after his master's degree right he would have made a lot more money in those 10 12 years that he spent in the academia so you talk to uh, your situation what you want to do right and money is not necessarily everything uh, in life uh, at least for some people if you're one of those people then yes, why not go for a PhD? PhD is a lot more than just uh, you know having a qualification for an entry level job. It's a qualification for lifetime. There are other reasons also why people do uh, PhD. So if you have those reasons in mind, why not? Uh, but just for this, no. Maybe twenty years back when things were different, but not now. I think the entry requirements uh, have changed quite uh, uh, drastically over these years. So no, don't don't have to do uh, PhD to work in coin finance. That's the conclusion. Thanks. Guys.